Hello and welcome to another episode from Kerbal Space Program. Today I'll be showing you how I actually built this aircraft. I had some questions and people asked me if they wanted a more detailed um, explanation of how the engines were actually put together and built and the aircraft was built. So I'm going to um, show you how this aircraft was made as quickly as I possibly can here <coughs> and uh, give you a bit of information along the way, little bits of tips. So <coughs> how this aircraft was made. So let's just start a new one, get rid of this one, go on. Alright, we're going to start off with a inline cockpit, <coughs> excuse me, and a structural fuselage here. <coughs> we're needing a few of those, so we'll just put that off to the side. <coughs> Whenever you're using parts that you'll be knowing that you need multiples of later on, I always press um, control, a, uh, control and click and then just put it off to the side somewhere. So as you've always got so as you've always got it then you don't have to go back through your list of items. Okay, so what we're gonna need now is we're gonna build the engine first. Because we're gonna need that part from Infernal Robotics, the the freestanding uh, washer. And we're gonna add that and place that on. Now by default it is this size, so you can put your um your fairing, your structural fairings on and then put the uh, washer in front of that if you so wanted to to be able to um, use a large one without tweaking or doing anything. But I, I like tweak scale. It saves you having to install multiple mods just to have an extra different size fuel tanks or extra different size things. What's the point of adding hundreds of different parts and making your game take forever to load up when you can have tweak scale and you've basically got hundreds of parts at a click of a button. I want the bigger structural fuselage, there we go, now I've got a big hollow one. Or I want a smaller one, now I've got a smaller one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, saves me having to install hundreds of parts. So we just want a smaller version of this. So it's the same size as the control probes. So we're going to grab one control probe. We will be using ten, but that's one is all we need right now. And we're going to change a few settings in it. So. By default, reaction wheels are set to normal. They have three settings, um, SAS and also pilot only. So we want the engines to be on pilot only. And we also want, for the action group, we're going to use action group key 2 here. And we're going to toggle the reaction wheel. So we can turn them on and off if need be. So now that's all saved into that one item. So if I copy that item by holding Alt and clicking on it, placing another one down, you'll see that this one is also set to pilot only. And if I go to my action groups, you'll see it's also got its action group added. We're going to want to um, partially push that inside of the other one, so we're just going to hold shift and clip it in. Now, to build this engine there's no need for the cheat mode debugging or anything like that, turn part clipping on and everything is not needed. So that's another good thing about this engine. So now that's all done, we just need 10 of those, so we're going to um, copy this out so that's uh, four, uh, yeah, four, eight, and ten, and each second one wasn't pushed in because the first one's not pushed in to the docking washer, which we don't want anyway. So we're going to just grab those four and pop them into each other as as well, so as it's all the same, like so. And this is the engine almost complete. I know it's that quick and easy. Uh, so now all we need to do is finish off the rest of the part of the engine. So we're going to need, uh, actually that's not the structure. We're going to need one of these little caps there. <coughs> and a tip. Make it look a bit better. There we go. Now we'll add the blades in. I'm just going to use uh, the yellow one twos and going to change the symmetry mode. And we'll do six times symmetry, press space to flip their alignment, like so. And we're just going to clip that on there. And now we're going to rotate them, we're just going to turn on the aerodynamic overlay. And so as we can see that we're getting them in the right position. Because ideally, what we want is this overlay to have the blue arrow pointing through the body of the aircraft. To give us our best... Um, forward thrust basically so we're just going to drag those out to give us a bit more power from the engines because the further the tips are away from each other uh, I seem to find I get slightly better performance out of them uh, we're just going to drag those forward a touch 
and now we're going to rotate them because at the moment you can see that the, there's no pitch on the blades so we're going to rotate that but I'm also going to turn the deployment on and reverse the deployment because by default the deployment is facing the wrong way so now we're going to rotate it like so you notice that the uh, arrow is now pulling through the aircraft so we're going to turn the deployment off now <clears throat> you can see that that's basically the pitch we have on the blades and when they're deployed we want full deployment so when they're fully deployed we want the blades to be level basically that's what's going to give us our optimum pitch for our blades so we're going to want to turn this a little bit more like that and that should make it straight through the aircraft perfect <clears throat> so now we're going to just undeploy those again because that's our feathering effect for the engine so that's basically initially when they deploy the engine no longer produces forward thrust which allows us to uh, slow the aircraft down and bring it in for a landing so we'll just undeploy those and we'll set a preset for the propeller blades now we left one empty for this reason so that is now deploy now one very important thing about these is on the the blades for your engine you want to make sure that there's no inputs from the pitch yaw or roll so you want to turn those off otherwise it's going to try and fly your plane and your engines are going to flip around like mad men and start wobbling all over the place so if your engine's wobbling madly especially just after takeoff that is the reason why these are trying to control your pitch yaw and roll so that is the engine complete so what we're going to do is just finish it off here by grabbing it and dragging it in to the structural fuselage just until it meets and that's it engine done you can take that off now and put it to the side do not lose it save it as a sub-assembly even better now when you save it as a sub-assembly it'll be saved with its um preset action keys so when you drag it out of a pre um the sub-assembly group it'll already have the action groups already preset so very handy to have so you'll never have to bake that engine again next we're going to finish off the rest of the aircraft so to do that we are going to need uh, a nose cone uh, we'll need another one of those in a moment and we're going to need some body weight just to help things along a little bit so we're going to need uh, fuel tanks we'll just use these little orange ones here and we'll use two of those and a battery for some power for the aircraft since it is electrically driven I'm going to want to copy that put that off to the side and grab the most forward orange fuel tank and one click that in and we will add oh, we'll add the tail section on and now we'll build the wings so for the wings we're going to use uh, type A's a mirror symmetry mode and clip them to the aircraft like so now we're going to bring the engines in on it and attach them like so now you notice that when you've got the engines on your aerodynamics overlay and your center of mass is going to be hard to read so what we're going to do is just take the blade section of the engines off leaving the rest of the engine attached and, <clears throat> and grab one of those fuselages I left there earlier I'm going to add those in like so and we're going to add the extra weight in because at the moment everything looks fine the lift to weight um, is perfect but as I add my control surfaces you'll notice that that will start pulling the other way and the weight will be too far forward so we're going to want to start pulling that weight back a bit and we'll just uh, do the same thing with those as well we'll just push those in so we can't see those orange um, engines uh, fuel tanks sorry and we'll finish off the wing now with uh, the swept wing B we'll just sort of roughly eyeball it in line with the rest of that and and then a wing B as well for here roughly eyeballing it, get it somewhat in line with the back and we can see our center of lift is still too far forward but that won't be a problem shortly so we'll just add the rest of the aircraft on now like the parts for the tail and now we'll do the rest of the wing for the tail so we'll just snap that onto the fuselage back here 
and we'll move that in position so we'll just drag that back out a little bit like so drag it up so it's roughly where we want it there and drag it back out now you notice it won't want to drag any further if you hold shift you can drag it beyond its limits there and you'll notice now the center of lift is pulled all the way back from moving this so we probably don't even want it that far back It'd probably be more stable if we had it somewhere here and we'll just fine tune this so it's, we don't have that texture glitch happening there my little pet peeve, it annoys me. <laughs> okay, so we'll just add um, our rudder control in first. And we want two of them, two inside each other, roughly. Somewhat like that. And we'll just now move them back a little bit. And maybe down just a little bit into the wing. There we go. And just check to make sure they are going deploying the right way. We'll just deploy them. Yes. And enlarge that deployment. Turn off pitch and roll. And yaw. We don't want those to yaw either. They're just there as our, <coughs> our brakes for when we're coming in for landing. That'll add drag. So now we'll do the same thing for our other brakes here. We'll add these elevators on. Now, to get these things to snap properly without having to press Q, W, E and all that, trying to rotate them and figure out why the hell can't I get it on straight, check to make sure that snap toggle is, or the toggle, well, your toggle snap is turned on so it is actually snapping. Now, another thing is you want to pull it all the way back, push it forward a little bit, and then it'll snap. Now, that'll have them both aligned up perfectly, and that way they both deploy the same way, not up and down, or they don't both go up, they both go down the way they should, the way a flap actually acts on the aircraft. We'll increase those so they have like maximum deployment, and we're just going to pull those a little bit out from the structure of the wing there. So we'll just undeploy those now, put them back, and we will turn off yaw and roll. We just want those to pitch and act as air brakes. Same with these, we'll just turn the deployment off there. So we'll add our action groups in for those now. So 10 can be our tail, and 9 can be our flaps there. And that's that part done. Now we'll do the elevators and ailerons. So we'll add these in. Now these ones I do want to actually flip around the other way because so I want them to go from thinner to thicker like that. Bring these closer. There we go. And just check their deployment. Not that we'll be deploying these. See these ones I want to deploy up because I flipped them around so they're upside down. But we can just change the deploy direction there. Not that it really matters. We don't need those to deploy anyway. And then we'll, next we'll add and these ones on. And we'll just flip those around as well and revert the deployment direction. Now these ones we only want to pitch, so we'll be turning off the roll and yaw off these. That's our elevator for our aircraft that'll help us pull up into the sky. And let's just get those lined up a little bit better. Looks a little bit sloppy. There we go. And we'll add in some more of those. Well, not those ones on the wings here and these ones will act as our ailerons so they will not roll a yaw but they will pitch and roll roll is what ailerons normally do for an aircraft they normally don't pitch an aircraft pitch normally comes from the tail rudder oh that, that's the rudder there which is actually what gives you yaw pitch and roll so roll comes from the wings yaw comes from the the vertical tail and your pitch comes from the horizontal tail by default on a normal aircraft. So we'll just um, get these to align properly as well, so just by clicking, touching the arrow there, I'll put them in alignment. We will now put on our wing tips, uh, structural D's will do, somewhat like that, and we'll rotate that. And that is too far. and we'll add our 
elevator controls onto this, so if you just press D once, that is still not lined up straight, is it? No, it is not. Sorry. Just try and straighten this up a little bit more. There you go, and snap those on. And we want to turn those to YAWL only. Doesn't matter about the deployment direction, because we won't be deploying those either. And we'll just copy those, stick those on the back as well. Turn the center of mass on as well. So we can see the center of mass is in front of the center of lift. It's a fair way. You normally wouldn't want it quite that far in front from like normal aircraft and things like that, but this aircraft is a little bit unique with this propeller. But basically that is the aircraft now done. So we're just gonna add uh, the engines back on in twin symmetry. And we're gonna put the wheels on. So last but not least is the wheels. So we just add, and again, I'm doing this in career mode, so I don't have all the parts unlocked. So you might have to, you might wanna use the bigger wheels for this. So I'm just gonna add the tail wheels in here. Just bring those back a little bit more. Up a little bit, that'll do. And the other landing gear can go mounted to the engine here. Like so, now that's a bit short. <clears throat> Um, you can use uh, larger wheels, I've only got the medium ones here, like I said, you can add another part down there to extend it if you want, but I'm using tweak scale, so I'm just going to increase that to, I don't know, increase it by an extra 20% or so, so we'll just, that'll do, give us that bit of an extra ground clearance there, so this is basically the aircraft constructed and ready to fly, so let's uh, test it and see how she goes and make sure that it's all in working order. So we'll just test all the control surfaces first once it loads up, which is actually taking a while, but probably got to do with a lot of mods that I have on at the moment, which are not necessary for making this video. Okay, so we're just gonna test the pitch of the blades. Yes, they pitch. We're gonna test the um, flaps. Yes, they work. Okay, we're gonna turn on the aerodynamic overlay now and we'll add the park brakes on and we'll just uh, spool up the engines just to make sure that they don't vibrate wildly out of control. And they seem like they are wanting to spin up nicely. Okay, you can see our control surfaces are locked, so we're going to turn SAS on. It frees up our control surfaces, maintains the engine spinning. We can release the park brakes now, unfeather the engines. And I just realized I didn't straighten these up. These could have been straightened a bit better. <laughs> okay, the aircraft, it wants to fly. Excellent. So the aircraft is flying. Not a problem. Good. So it all works and we'll just check inside the cockpit here. Little to no vibration at all. Obviously there will be vibration if I pull up and pull down. You'll see them wobble a little bit because they are reaction wheels. They will try and move, but we're pretty stable. That is perfect. So we'll just start. Actually, let's see if we can try and bring this thing in for a landing on what runway we've got left. So we'll feather the engines now and deploy our air brakes. As you can see, they're causing drag. So we're going to try and come in for a landing here. And we've touched down, oops, not quite, there we go. Okay, so we've come down for a nice landing. So yeah, all in all, it works just fine. Just check the reverse throttle here. Yep, there's slowing us right down and pushing us backwards, perfect. Okay, so that is how the aircraft was made. Hopefully I gave you enough detail and explained in full as to how to get the pitch right for the blades, how to uh, get it all balanced, make sure that the aircraft's balanced by taking off the blades, add some air brakes in and some flaps to help bring you, slow you down. Now these engines are still at full throttle. You can turn them off like I said before with that action group button 2. Oops, I actually clicked the washer there. Um, but pressing 2 turns them off. The engines will now shut down, but they will still retain their pitch if you ever want to turn them back on. Okay, thank you for watching this video, and if you like what you saw, please uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much.